E3. Every year it seems to get worse. And when we think to ourselves, well, that sucked ass, the next year has us looking back at the previous year and thinking, wow, last year was better. Maybe I'm crazy, or maybe we're all on the crazy train, but not the fun, cocaine-fueled, masculine-inspired, drug haze Hunter S. Thompson wrote about in all of his Gonzo articles, but the Orwellian nightmare we are all doomed to live in. Enough pontificating. Day one of E3, Ubisoft board, made me wish for fast board. Boom. Roasted. Right. The countdown clock used to be attached to big events. You know, like blowing up James Bond's skull. Or New Year's Eve ball dropping before social media turned into a wank fest of people you don't know or care about. Now it's watching gameplay of nothing with 47 minutes to go. This was a sign of what was to come. And this is why MASH had the theme song, Suicide is Painless. Ubisoft has an hour and 19 minutes of nothingness. It's almost like they want to punish you for showing up. And maybe they think this is hot shit and you're on the edge of your seat. Maybe I'm just jaded beyond belief on the level of like a Charles Dickens novel character who lost his leg and he has scurvy in his dick hole. Or maybe this is just that lame and I crave escapism from the minutia that is life and E3 is not providing me of that. Kind of like when you try to buy an eight ball of cocaine and you find out it's flour. Thanks a lot, Juan Gonzalez. Hi everyone, and welcome to Ubisoft Forward. I'm Neelam. And I'm Yusuf. We're so thrilled to be back hosting Ubisoft Forward. Over the next hour, we'll be your guides to all the latest news and exciting announcements coming from Ubisoft. We've got so much in store for you today. And Finally, Ubisoft Forward starts with hosts who are overly excited to show you mediocre shit. E3 hosts are the modern day car salesmen. They know they have a lemon on their hands and they are trying like hell to upsell you on this nugget of shit. We thought it could be contained, but it evolved, so we did too. Rainbow Six Extraction. Aliens is what Ubisoft came up with. This reeks of, we want to put out something different, but we want to keep selling you on the games as service. This trailer is about as exciting as a colonoscopy from a drunk doctor running away from his divorce by drowning in gin and listening to Frank Sinatra music on loop as he puts on the rubber gloves and begins to probe you. In me you see. To prove to her that I'm not just a man, but a man's man. For Rainbow Six operators are dropped into alien territory. In today's walkthrough, we're on a mission to investigate anomalies identified at the Orpheus Research Center in Alaska. HQ will provide additional instructions. We need new data on the parasites underground. The alien character design is as uninspired as the game mode itself. Who the hell pitched this? I mean, honestly. Who came up with this and who was the moron that sat there and said, this is a good idea. If this was brought to me and I was the head of something at Ubisoft, I would look at it and go, if I could fire you at the speed of light, I would do it. Pack your shit and leave. Great, we get to hear an interview for a game mode nobody cares about. Well, they're safely recovered. You and your squad are gonna have to come back together to get back in there and get them out. Every time you go in the containment zone, you risk losing all your progress and upgrades. So stay on your toes and weigh every move you make. Balancing that risk and reward scenario is going to be tough. Bruno, can you tell us a little bit more about the alien threat? What is it? Who are they? And where do they come from? What we- Honestly, the game is just siege with aliens and AI. Being played by people working off of a script. You know online matches are nothing like this at all. Honestly, it feels like the people who come up with these trailers for the online game mode have never played online ever. I haven't heard one racial slur. No one told me to die yet. And everyone's working as a unit and understand what they need to do. No. Operators, it's time to unite and stand together against this emerging threat. Squad up with friends in co-op or step into the containment alone. Stay tuned for more Rainbow Six Extraction Intel coming very soon.
If you think fighting aliens is tough, try learning guitar. Well, that was a segue. Now that's comedy. 10 years ago, Rocksmith redefined music learning by introducing the first console game that taught millions how to play guitar. Whether you're already an expert or just starting out, Rocksmith has an approach that's for everyone. A fun and interactive way to learn guitar, playing your favorite songs. And in the decades since its release, our community... Guess what? Our salesmen are back to push Rocksmith. Ubisoft is trying to cut the legs from under guitar teachers and other musical instructors. It's almost sad how much money the music industry for instruments is losing because no one wants to actually learn how to play any instruments anymore. Gibson guitars went bankrupt. If Gibson is struggling, you know shit is rough. Honestly, this looks like a more commercialized version of Guitar Pro and that's been around for like a decade now. If you really want to learn how to play guitar or any other instrument, find a teacher in your local area that's actually good. There's so much more to music that you can learn from a personal touch rather than some sort of soulless machine telling you, E, A minor, blah, blah, blah. You know, like this isn't gonna teach anyone much of anything except how to play contemporary simple songs. And basically you'll either forget what you've learned or you'll stagnate and do the same thing over and over again. And before you know it, you'll be like Indy Fox playing the same four Quack. chords for the last four years and she still hasn't mastered how to play Heart Shaped Box by Nirvana on Twitch. Go figure. Beta. Summer's coming and nothing gets thrill seekers blood flowing like bright sun and fresh trails. And Riders Republic will give them just that. Last year, you got a first look at our massive multiplayer outdoor sports extravaganza. Since then, the project's grown by jumps and grinds. The Riders Republic. Remember that sick ass game? Yeah, me neither. Bro, what the Quack. fuck is this? This just looks like a less shitty version of PlayStation Home, narrated by a dude bro who sounds like he stepped off of the set of the Ratchet and Clank game or Rift Apart. This game looks about as thrilling as getting your balls caught in a mouse trap and then your dick hairs nibbled off by a mouse who thought it was a piece of cheese. Rider, see you soon. Don't keep the mountains waiting. Riders Republic is coming September 2nd, and you can pre-order now and claim your right to rip. <laughs> Yeah, let me pre-order this game as service trash. Oh, nice. Push Siege on me again. Siege is the Star Wars of <laughs> Ubisoft. Mother of God, holy hell. My expectations for Ubisoft wasn't high, but this is goddamn abysmal. No wonder they keep hiring Greg Miller. That fucker would look at this shit and smile and say, it's great. Genuinely, he has either no soul, he's a robot, or they pay Greg Miller so well, he just remembers how much money's in his bank account and he can't stop smiling. Ah. The gaming community needs to be better about building the community it's in. Yes. And I can't agree with that enough. If you know anything about Greg Miller and Kind of Funny, being better is a big part of what we always talk about. It's be better to each other and don't be a jerk. And I know right now, on our very own Twitch page, right here, a bunch of people are being jerks. And everybody who's a good person, which is the majority of gamers, need to step up, ladies and gentlemen, and of course show that the positive outshines. The negative, that's my rant. Goodbye on that Thank one. you. Disgusting! Never have I seen such a display of blatant puffery. <laughs> Never in all my life! An animated trailer for a Siege character. Yeah, don't care. Oh, I forgot they made her a Native American character, something like North Star. I don't know. Whenever white people come up with a Native character, they always have some sort of astral name or some crap. And to prove my point, I googled Native American cartoon characters, and I found something called Brave Star. Ubisoft then greets us with more updates for their live games. Yeah, because we're all dying for that. Am I right? Jesus Christ. Ghost Recon. Oh boy. Ubisoft's Call of Duty. Connecting with friends and family. When you're in good company, there are no bad dancers. 
So move the coffee table, alert the local homeowners association, and let's get loud. No. Now we get a little bit of Just Dance. Whoopee! The game that has made Twitch Dots thousands upon thousands of dollars per stream. And they still don't buy the game. They just watch the shit on YouTube. A Viking leader going on a quest to fight for a new home is an adventure that resonated closely with many of you. I certainly had fun exploring England with Eivor and stumbling across unique world events that left me with memorable sides. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The most successful Assassin's Creed that came out or something? Yeah, great, meh, whatever. Honest to God, I'm out of to give. Really? Ubisoft also decided to push on us Mythic Quest. Remember that great Apple show? Have you been watching it? No, me neither. Well, uh, yeah. That show you forgot existed somehow got a second season. I feel really seen and heard. I don't want to see you or hear you. They even show you that the show has a 100 score on Rotten Tomatoes. Like that means f all. Lily Singh had a score of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes for like a year before one critic came in and said, yeah, it's not that good a show. Then, it's a whodunit with teeth that'll be coming to theaters June 25th and on demand July 2nd. Hello everyone, I am Josh Rubin, the director of Werewolves Within. And I'm Sam Richardson, the star of Werewolves Within. Werewolves Within was based off a Ubisoft game and we're so excited to bring you an exclusive look just for you. Check it out. Dr. Ellis? Before you know it, Ubisoft decided to let you and I know that they are going to put out a movie. Oh, I know you can't wait for it. I know you're you're stoked. You are you are loving it right now. This is good stuff. I mean, honest to God, Ubisoft can't even put out a creatively decent game anymore. And they're going to delve into television shows and movies. I thought this was supposed to be E3, Electronic Gaming Expo. Instead, we are now getting... Uh, Oh, I think I'm having a mental seizure. Not uh, littering, I'm just excited. Not judging, just watching it. Theaters are on your on-demand platforms. No hero story is complete without a great rival to match them. After all, even the most vile tyrant is a star of their own narrative. When it comes to memorable villains, no one does it better than Far Cry. Far Cry in Cuba. I've seen the trailer for this game so many times, I'm actually sick of it. Oh wait, but it's not in Cuba, because they don't want to offend people. But then Far Cry 5 was in America, but that's okay, because Americans suck. I guess that's the logic I'm picking up on. We also got the Rabbits game with Mario, basically XCOM Rabbits, I, I hope you're happy. Avatar The Last Airbender? No wait, this is Avatar The Blue People, basically the Native American movie but with aliens, get it? Alien, Native Americans, whatever, who cares? Uh, is a game. I, I hope you're ready for it. I mean, why are they putting out the game now? When did Avatar come out? Like 10 years ago? Like, dude, the guy who was the star of Avatar isn't even in movies anymore. What is the point of this? Whatever. Good Lord, you know, they, 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 they won't do Splinter Cell. People are like, please, please, Pia Guzman. Give us Splinter Cell. And then he's like, ah, oh, we had you. We give you Avatar, a uh, James Cameron movie, turn to game. You play blue alien with long stick legs. Even if you go to the Ubisoft page, you can see people begging for Splinter Cell. <laughs> and Sam Fish is dead. Now you can be a blue skin dude. Take that, you bigot. Basically, uh, then the stream ends with the final virtue signal. Um... They tell you about the Native American character that they created. And even as someone with native blood, I kind of don't care. You know, to me, this means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. Like, I know one of the women were saying this will bring people's eyes on the name. No, it won't. Nobody's going to care. All right, it's like a Native American character. It's not going to make every, like kids all of a sudden go, wow, I care about native issues. No, believe me. I have enough Native American charities hit me up on the regular looking for money every day i think it's either a they're scamming or b nobody's sending anything but my stupid ass and uh we end with some interviews of people who uh yeah don't care like this is the downside of a youtube channel people expect you to watch this stuff in its entirety and be like normal afterwards like 
after I finished, I was just in a rotten mood because it sucked. It was a waste of my life. The next day. Xbox and Bethesda E3. From what I'm told, this was the best E3 showcase. That's two years in a row that Xbox is said to have won. But we shall see, children. And frankly, how hard is it to win the Special Olympics if you don't have a club foot? Just a question. I love seeing the new games, crossing my fingers for my favorites to return, hoping for a few surprises. Most of all, though, I love seeing everyone around the world come together and celebrate what games mean to all of us. And I think, you know, this past year, they've meant even more. We start off with God Howard. This time he's by himself, so you don't realize what a manlet he is. All jokes aside, he's trying to sell us on the magic of gaming, which hasn't been magical in God knows how long. They're either too busy lecturing us as gamers, or they're trying to sell us those goddamn season passes. Do you feel the magic? Todd Howard is rocking a Rolex GMT Master 2. This watch is $40,000. Todd Howard is living large. He is living so large. Two minutes in, Papa Todd shows us a pointless trailer for Starfield. Honestly, this is as pointless as the Elder Scrolls 6 trailer that they showed last year, where literally it's like you look at some stuff and you still know nothing about what the game is. It is nothing. It's like, look, look at this. It looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, what's it about? Shut up and look. Watch that. You like that? There's some switches. He flipped some switches. We've come to the beginning of humanity's final from the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4. Good God Almighty, Fallout 4 is absolute dog <laughs> We're looking at an in-game cutscene that already has me wary because it's telling me about Fallout 4. The worst Fallout to date till they made Fallout 76. It was almost like Bethesda made Fallout 76. So Fallout 4 seemed better in comparison. Not gonna scream. I refuse to scream. You won't make me scream, Todd. You're gonna get a dirty sock in a minute. Man uses dirty socks to clean computer desk. Dog immediately takes dirty socks and chews on them. Don't you get that? Get out of here. Take the sock. Leave the guitar pick. Anyway, in-game cutscenes mean f <laughs> Remember, you know, when Cyberpunk 2077 was shown off and they had the in-game cutscene before it came out? And CD Projekt Red was a respected game developer at that time. And now look at it. It came out and it was a nightmare of all nightmares. Not even going to get into it. You know, I haven't even played Fallout 76 in so long. It's like they patched it. And I was like, you know what? I'm done with these patches where one thing gets fixed and another thing breaks. Screw it. I'll come back in like two years. Anyway, the point being, these in-game cinematic trailers mean nothing. Fallout 4 looked decent till we played it and saw the textures and meshes close up. The characters had block feet for God's sakes. You took off your character's shoes and they had Minecraft feet, bro. I just don't move on. Oh, 11, 11, 22. Ooh, yeah, it'll come out next year at the end of the year. So you might as well say damn near like 2023. Anyway, no gameplay, me no care. In-game cutscenes are curated trailer bullshit that's meant to be the absolute best representation of the game. Anyway, when they said that Starfield was a Xbox exclusive, Sony fanboys began rushing to Twitter to talk about just how trash Bethesda was and how this would hurt sales, while also ignoring the fact that Sony does the same exact thing. But console fanboys are a lot like feminists, honestly. When it doesn't work out in their favor, it's trash, it's problematic. When shit does work in their favor, then, you know, it's just good business. Believe me, I know Xbox fans are phony too, the hardcore ones. It's a level of brand loyalty that's absolutely insane and astonishing. There's no other words for it. We live in a truly dystopian nightmare that is Orwellian in the darkest levels of a Charles Dickens novel, if I dare say so. When people integrate so much of a brand into themselves that like, it's important to them like a family member or a pet or something, it's really weird and this will be a problem later on in life, hopefully after I'm dead, so you can live with the garbage. I'll be gone. Games have been such an important source of joy and connection. We are committed to forging the next era of gaming, conjuring worlds never before possible, unlocking play across all devices, and delivering the power of games to 
I don't know what planet she's on that gaming was a source of joy, quotation marks, and connections. She has never seen Dark Side Phil's streams, obviously. Frankly, let's skip over all this feel-good BS. Gaming is anything but the shit she described. Gaming is now a minefield of journalists telling gamers that they suck and they need to be better, companies that pander to interest groups that squeal the loudest on Twitter, and then alter their games for people that won't buy them. Gaming is pretty much becoming walking simulators. Gaming is based more on marketing than in hype than it is on gameplay and story. Gaming is in its dark age. The golden age is over. We're talking like PlayStation 2, some of PlayStation 3, and the original Xbox. That was the golden age. We're now in the dark age. Regret to inform you. It's a never-ending struggle of the gaming industry trying to nickel and dime us out of more and more money. The launch of a new console gives the gaming industry the excuse to add an extra $10 for literally turning to visual fidelity from medium and low to high. These features were free on PC, but you can pay more. And don't get me started on these goddamn online subscriptions. The gaming industry charges you to use your internet and everybody's cool with it. My f***ing God. Could you imagine if you got in your car and you had to put in your credit card information so you could turn it the f*** on and drive it? People would lose their shiznit. But I digress. It's about E3 and not gaming as a whole. Merry Christmas. You people demanded this of me. Now you've got it. A miserable miser watching horrible stuff. Stu? Where is my spring water? I'm serious. I want that water, Stu. There's no more water. Stu, my throat is parched. I need the water. Давай, малюй картину маслом. Stalker 2 was announced as a console exclusive for the Xbox. Good on them. Lord knows it'll finally shove those hardcore Sony fanboys. Eh, no it won't. Honestly, Stalker doesn't look that bad. And I'm shocked. I mean, the gameplay is a little ridiculous. You know, the person playing. Because the dude is standing out in the open, no cover, no one shooting him. And he obviously knew where the first enemy AI was because he walked right in the room, pointed up and shot. Which means they probably did this trailer in more than one take. Is it just me or are all these Russian games the same? Like blend stalker gameplay into Metro Exodus and that other Russian game that was shown at E3. And I defy you to see a difference. Post-apocalyptic nightmare, monsters in the wasteland, either heavy Russian accent in English or just straight up Russian. Rinse, lather, and repeat. I'll give Xbox this much. It's not as annoying as Ubisoft was. I mean, they're just showing games and that works for me. Left for Dead 2.0, or as we've come to know it, Back for Blood. Listen, um, I guess it's a good thing the game's coming out. I don't really care, but I'm sure there are people who love this. And let's face it, Valve has been sitting on this IP like it sits on its balls with every other good IP. They just have doing nothing. Half-Life 3, don't hold your breath in this lifetime. I'm just a little burnt out on zombie games, but this could be good, and odds are I'll be forced to play it. We also saw Sea of Thieves with Jack Sparrow. Funny how Disney is burying the character Johnny Depp created and everyone loves, but they have no bones about lies to get out with his likeness and voice. But what are you going to do? I mean, it's not literally Johnny Depp's voice, but someone doing an impression of Johnny Depp. And I guess, you know, finally see if these has some stuff going on with it. I mean, buying a game today is literally like early access when it's this like games as service online BS. Had they any brains, they would have sat on this IP for two more years till it was fully flushed out and released it. And the hype would have been huge rather than what it is now. But what do I know? Battlefield 2042 looks good. I mean, EA's already trying to milk this damn cow half to death. 
you know, I'm going to hold out hope that the gameplay isn't garbage, but, you know, it's EA. Who the hell knows what DICE will do? This is usually the moment when I say hello and welcome to the Bethesda E3 showcase. We love that we can share the stage with Xbox this year, and whether you've known Bethesda for 35 years or are just getting to know us, we couldn't be happier to bring you the latest on your favorite games. We started this showcase with my good friend Todd Howard, who gave you a first look at Starfield. Along with Bethesda Game Studios, all of our teams are continuing to work on the projects that have been in development since well before we joined the Xbox family. So rest assured, the games you've been expecting and hoping for are still in the works. And today, we're bringing 10 more titles to Game Pass for a total of 30. 2450, Pete Hines, the lore master is here. It wouldn't be an E3 without Pete Hines, would it? Or a Bethesda E3. Pretty much they they dragged out Pete Hines to tell you about Game Pass. Oh my God. Again with Game Pass. Xbox has pushed Game Pass multiple times. I'm not really interested, but maybe some people want it. I mean, frankly, it's cool that Doom is getting a little upgrade for the consoles, but Lord have mercy. This year's E3 should have been dubbed the Games as Service Edition. And our boy Pete lets us know that Fallout 76 is still a thing. And they have new DLC. Yay! I love how the Battle Royale mode just got canned silently because nobody was playing it as they pretend that the world loves this game to death. Good lord. Instead of giving us a good single player Fallout, here's some more sporadic crap that they're on 76 because we're praying we can milk you. And frankly... They will sh** out Fall 76 stuff till they feel the cow's tit is bone dry. And then they'll crush up the bones of the cow and call it powdered milk. The Elder Scroll Online. Yay. Come on, bro. Tickle my tank with some new Elder Scrolls 6 news. Not more of this games as service Elder Scrolls Online. Me no care. At this point, we moved on to Halo. Halo is pretty much to Xbox what Sonic is to Sega. We watch a little bit of gameplay. I think that, no, this isn't gameplay. It's another cutscene. All you get is cutscenes usually, but they did show gameplay, so I take that back. You watch this cutscene of Master Chief bumbling through space, but he knows where the hell he's going. And oddly enough, there's a lot of sound in space. Really weird, right? Basically, it's your standard fair trailer that you're supposed to get hyped about. And if you're a loyal fan, odds are you're already crying by now. You're probably crying like the birth of your firstborn child. That's how just touching and an awe-inspiring this moment is for you. For the rest of us, we don't really give a shit. That's not to say that Halo's not been met with some controversy and blowback. That's because the little robot lady, um, you know, the AI, don't know her name, don't care. She used to be hot and half naked. I'm not objecting to it. I love me some nibblies. I can see this being an issue for you if you're into that sexy little blue minx telling you what to do like some sort of digital femdom. So now we've got people on Twitter fighting over the AI lady. There's basically two camps. One side's like, uh, oh, they made, they dressed her up and covered her body and made her blocky. Uh, and then there are other people that are like, uh, oh, you chauvinist and sexist, blah, 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 blah. You know, the usual Twittering that means nothing. The sort of garbage that one day future historians will look back and think of what wasted potential was here. It'll be like the bubonic plague of our <laughs> time. The digital dark age, they'll call it. And History Channel will call us all Quacks. Frankly, I don't care. I'm not really a Halo fan. I can understand you're used to a character being a certain way and then they change it for political correctness because Lord knows that seems to be the sign of the times. It's really weird. Don't sexualize women in gaming. And then they turn around and go, support women on OnlyFans, bigot. Yeah, what do you want? So I understand. And then there's the other camp that's pissed off about it. You know, I don't care. I don't care anymore. No, screw it. Screw it. We're moving on. Uh, Diablo 2 Remake. It also features a change of a female character. Dude, they turned her into fucking Aaron Carter. So I guess I'm seeing a pattern here with Microsoft and their IPs. A Plague Tale. The first one was decent. Move on. Among Us on Xbox. And that train's left the station. Forza 5. Whoopee. And finally... Bethesda shows off an open world vampire shooter with Gen Z characters. I find this whole idea hilarious. With the way that Gen Z acts on Twitter and TikTok, they're not stopping sh**. If they can't cancel you online for something specifically through TikTok or Twitter, they have, they're, they're f a lot of ideas. They, they can't do anything. And I don't think screaming a monster is a bigot is going to help you. 
Now, it would be funny if they made a game about Gen Zers trying to survive and, you know, using their wits and easily being picked off. Because let's face it, have you seen some of these people? Do you think the people like buying BTS empty bags of McDonald's are going to be able to fight off a vampire? Like, really? They can't even fight off the harsh bitterness of reality. That's why they have to regress into themselves, come up with multiple genders and all other sorts of mannerisms, bullets, and ridiculous dances that ultimately show a decline in society. But what do I know? This video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet, making sure that me being on the internet is somewhat profitable. Now I have two bags of packaged tuna. These wallets can hold up to 12 cards. They come in 30 different stylistic colors. I'm showing you burnt titanium and 18 karat gold because that's how large I'm living. I'm hood rich. These wallets have over 40,000 five star ratings. Bulletproof RFID blocking technology. You could take a chainsaw to it. I don't know why you would, but the options there, if it ever really, you know, like if your wife left you and you decided she wasn't even getting your Ridge wallet. Oh wait, no, it would survive the chainsaw. Forget that, sorry. Go to ridgewallet.com slash it's a Gundam and use their unique promo code it's a Gundam to save 10% off of your order on your next purchase. Free worldwide shipping and returns if you don't like the wallet.